Japan earthquake and nuclear crisis. Japan's nuclear crisis intensified Sunday as authorities raced to combat the threat of multiple reactor meltdowns and more than 170,000 people evacuated. The quake and tsunami savaged northeastern coast where fears spread over possible radioactive contamination. Nuclear plant operators were frantically trying to keep temperatures down in a series of nuclear reactors, including one where officials feared a partial meltdown could be happening to prevent the disaster from growing even worse. But hours after officials announced the latest dangers to face the troubled Fukushima nuclear complex, including the possibility of a second explosion in two days, there were few details about what was being done to bring the situation under control. The chief cabinet secretary on Sunday said that a hydrogen explosion could occur at the complex's Unit 3, the latest reactor to face a possible meltdown that would follow a hydrogen blast Saturday in the planet's Unit 1, where operators attempted to prevent a meltdown by injecting seawater into it. A meltdown at the number 3 reactor could be more serious than at the other reactors because it is fueled by both plutonium and uranium. BBC News has reported the others have only uranium fuel. At the risk of raising further public concern, we cannot rule out the possibility of an explosion. If there is an explosion, however, supposedly there would be no significant impact on human health. But more than 170,000 people have evacuated as a precaution. Officials have declared states of emergency at six reactors, three at Fukushima and three at another nearby complex after operators lost their ability to cool the reactors using usual procedures. Local evacuations have been ordered at each location. The United Nations Nuclear Agency said a state of emergency was also declared Sunday at another complex after higher than permitted levels of radiation were measured there. It said Japan informed it that all three reactors there were under control. All of the reactors at the complexes shut down automatically when the earthquake shook the region, but with backup power supplies also failing, shutting down the reactors is just the beginning of the problem, scientists say. You need to get rid of the heat, said a professor of physics and biophysics at Salzburg University, an advisor to the Austrian government on nuclear issues. You're basically putting the lid down on a pot that is boiling. They have a window of opportunity where they can do a lot, he said, such as using seawater as an emergency coolant. But if the heat is not brought down, the cascading problems can eventually be impossible to control. This isn't something that will happen in a few hours, it's days. A senior official of the Economy, Trade and Industry Ministry indicated the reactor core in Unit 3 had melted partially, telling a news conference. I don't think the fuel rods themselves have been spared damage, according to the Kyoto News Agency. A complete meltdown, the collapse of a power plant's ability to keep temperatures under control, could release uranium and dangerous contaminants into the environment and pose major widespread health risks. Experts noted, however, that even a complete meltdown would probably be far less severe than the 1986 disaster at Chernobyl where a reactor exploded and sent a cloud of radiation over much of Europe. That reactor, unlike the ones in Fukushima, was not housed in a sealed container. The Japanese authorities have classified the event at number one as a level four accident with local consequences on the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale, INES. The scale is used to consistently communicate the safety significance of events associated with sources of radiation. The scale runs from zero, deviation, no safety significance, to seven, major accident. The 1979 Three Mile Island accident in Pennsylvania was a level five accident with wider consequences. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster was a level seven major accident. The plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, 
T-E-P-C-O, said radiation levels around the plant had risen above the safety limit, but that this did not mean an immediate threat to human health. A nuclear disaster which the promoters of nuclear power in Japan said wouldn't happen is in progress, the Citizens Nuclear Information Center said. It is occurring as a result of an earthquake that they said would not happen. The nuclear crisis was triggered by twin disasters on Friday when an 8.9 magnitude now upgraded to a 9.0 magnitude earthquake, the most powerful in the country's recorded history, was followed by a tsunami that savaged its northeastern coast with breathtaking speed and power. More than 1,400 people were killed and hundreds more were missing. According to officials, the police in one of the worst hit areas estimated the toll there alone was more than 10,000. The scale of the multiple disasters appeared to be outpacing the efforts of Japanese authorities to bring the situation under control. Rescue teams were struggling to search hundreds of miles of devastated coastline and hundreds of thousands of hungry survivors huddled in darkened emergency centers cut off from rescuers and aid. At least 1.4 million households had gone without water since the quake and food and gasoline were quickly running out across the region. Large areas of the countryside were surrounded by water and unreachable. Nearly 2 million households were without electricity. Rolling blackouts. Starting Monday, power will be rationed with rolling blackouts in several cities, including Tokyo. The government doubled the number of troops pressed into rescue operations to approximately 100,000 from 51,000 as powerful aftershocks continued to rock the country. Hundreds have hit since the initial timbre. On Saturday, an explosion destroyed the walls and ceiling of Fukushima's Unit No. 1 as operators desperately tried to prevent it from overheating and melting down by releasing steam. Officials were aware that the steam contained hydrogen and were risking an explosion by venting it, acknowledged a spokesman for the government's nuclear industrial safety agency, but chose to do so because they needed to reduce the pressure. Officials insisted there was no significant radioactive leak after the explosion, at least hopefully. Without power and with its valves and pumps damaged by the tsunami, authorities resorted to drawing seawater mixed with boron in an attempt to cool the unit's overheated uranium fuel rods. Boron disrupts nuclear chain reactions. Operators also began using seawater to cool the complexes. Unit 3 reactor, after earlier attempts to lower its temperature, failed. The United Nations Nuclear Agency said, The move likely renders the 40-year-old reactors unusable, said a foreign ministry official, briefing reporters. He said radiation levels outside the plant briefly rose above legal limits, but had since declined significantly. Japan has a total of 55 reactors spread across 17 complexes nationwide. According to experts interviewed by the Associated Press, any melted fuel would eat through the bottom of the reactor vessel. Next, it could eat through the floor of the already damaged containment building. At that point, the uranium and dangerous byproducts would start escaping into the environment. The walls of the reactor vessel, six inches of stainless steel, would eventually melt into a lava-like pile, slump into any remaining water on the floor, and potentially cause a massive explosion. Such an explosion would enhance the spread of radioactive contaminants. If the reactor core became exposed to the external environment, officials would likely begin pouring cement and sand over the entire faculty, as was done at the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear accident in the Ukraine. Peter Bradford a former commissioner of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission said in a briefing for reporters. Another expert, Ken Bergogen, a physicist and former Sandia scientist, added that as a result of such a meltdown, the surrounding land would be off limits for a considerable period of time and a lot of first responders would die. This 9.0 magnitude earthquake was one of the greatest in recorded history and is a great earthquake. Seismologists now say that the island of Japan was shifted 
as much as 13 feet to the east by this earthquake. It also caused a 1.6 microsecond speed up of the Earth's daily rotation and a 4 inch shift in Earth's axis and will reverberate and shake the Earth for months to come. In other words, it really has changed the Earth in some kind of way. And yes, all these are more signs of the times. Mark chapter 13 verse 19 For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. Revelation chapter 8 verse 10 And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many humans died of the waters, because they were made bitter. 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone, not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. 13. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying for the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Revelation, chapter 16, verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. 9. And humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And yes, like I say, again, it's time. It's time for all prophecy to be fulfilled. And there are many different kinds of signs happening, day by day, all around the world. These are the end times, transition days which is a continuing day-by-day -day process. In other words, everything that's not right must change quickly or rapidly and for the better. And the fourth angel has begun to sound. 